Reba, the Real Estate and Business Brokers Act is now Tressa, Trust in Real Estate Service Act. I like the name better, so there's one positive. Most changes to this phase one, because there's gonna be another round for phase two, are quite nominal, at least for the majority of the changes, or what I should say, the majority has kept the same, but there are a few changes for sure that you have to know. You need to know them as an agent or a broker, of course, working in the field, but also 100%, you need to know these TRESA changes to pass the Humber College real estate exams. Just quickly, I'm Callum Moore, eXp Realty Real Estate broker here in Ontario. If you find these videos helpful, consider liking and subscribing. It means an absolute ton to me, but let's just dive right into the video. So the first four things I'm going to break down are a client, a self-represented party, assistance, and the RICO information guide and disclosure to self-represented party form. I'll break these four things down and I'll put them into scenarios and examples because in my opinion, this is not only the best way to teach, but the best way to learn. Just quickly so you understand these four things, there's no big changes to our code of ethics, which makes sense. We as registrants working with anyone involved in a trade shall still treat them with fairness, honesty, and integrity. Okay, first on the list, a client and exactly the same as before. They are owed our full services. We promote and protect their best interests and we owe them a fiduciary duty, same as before. Second, and this is where things get different, a self-represented party. We must also treat a self-represented party, of course, with fairness, honesty, integrity as per the code same as before, but we are not allowed to provide any services to them, only assistance. Third, what is assistance? Assistance can be provided to a self-represented party, but only if it benefits your client. For assistance, there is no closed list of permitted activities, but it has to be providing assistance to help your client, and it has to be done in the best interest of your client. For example, you can show a property to a self-represented party if that property you are showing is listed by your yourself or the brokerage representing a client. If that self-represented party doesn't like that particular property that you are showing and for example wants to see similar properties in the area, you cannot show them other properties that you aren't representing. That would be considered providing a service and you cannot provide any services to a self-represented party. They would now have to become a client of the brokerage to receive that service. I'll put something up on the screen here and then take it down because when you're watching this it might have no relevance to you depending on when you're watching this but there is no more customer relationship there is no customer service agreements no buyer customer service agreement no seller customer service agreement that is completely gone and it is more or less replaced by this similar as before when you are providing customer service to a customer now we are assisting a self-represented party we have to be sure not to create an implied client relationship you cannot include Include advice or opinions and cannot encourage the self-represented party to rely on the registrant's knowledge, skill, or judgment. Fourth, the RICO Information Guide and Disclosure to Self-Represented Party Form. The RICO Information Guide must be provided to a client or a self-represented party and this guide published by RICO outlines key information that all consumers should know about working with real estate professionals. This guide's purpose is to provide more clarity to the consumer and we as registrants must explain the contents of the guide before providing any service or assistance. The disclosure to a self-represented party form must be provided in addition to the guide to a self-represented party and the purpose of this form is to make sure they understand the risks of receiving assistance from a registrant who is protecting and promoting the best interests of their seller or buyer client, the limited nature of the assistance, and that they should seek independent professional advice before proceeding. Okay. So that is a good breakdown of some of the bigger changes. And as I go through the changes RICO has made when moving from Reba to Tressa, and I'll link to this in the description below as well, I do see a lot of similarities. There are some small changes here and there, so definitely go through it for sure. But the biggest of the bunch after those four is sharing the content of competing offers. The underlining concept of all of these changes, in my opinion, is to provide that more clarity to the consumer. And this 100% can do that. Under Tressa, if the seller client directs us, we as registrants are permitted to share the contents of competing written offers with every person who is making an offer. The seller can also direct us that only parts of the offer be shared. Okay, sharing the content of offers now 
is something we were not allowed to do before, of course. We were only allowed to share during a multiple offer scenario of how many offers we had. So this is definitely a change. We can now disclose details such as price. We can disclose conditions, closing dates, etc. Stuff like that. Will this change anything? Well, only time will tell because someone like myself, who I consider myself very strategic when it comes to negotiations, I'd probably only start disclosing this information towards the end and only do so if I can create an additional bidding war. As you can see on their website, we as registrants must follow the instructions of the seller client, including any change in the instructions. For example, a seller client may instruct their registrant to share the contents of the offer and a few days later change their mind and instruct their registrant not to share the information. Or of course, what would happen the majority of the time, which is vice versa, and we will change the strategy when it's right to do so. We'll have to see how this plays out. Of course, this, I suppose, does bring more clarity to the environment, but it may eventually come to the point where you either have to disclose or not disclose, not a combination of the two. But as of right now, these are the rules. We have to follow our seller's direction, of course, but more often than not, our sellers trust us in the decision-making process because they are professionals, so they're going to be turning to our, us for advice. But as far as RICO goes, we have to follow our seller's directions on this matter. I could go on for 20 minutes on this particular topic and how these strategic negotiations are going to work on the sell side, but we'll keep it there for now. If you have any takeaways from that RICO website, be sure to add them in the comments below. Those were my big takeaways from it, and I'll continually be adding to this video, and I'll be doing another separate one when phase two comes out. Phase two is going to be focused on multiple representation, now being designated representation. Note that if you are in the Humber College real estate program right now, this information, this new TRESA update is due to be dripped into the material, dripped into the exams starting April 21st, and it should all be updated for phase one by the end of May. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And if you are in the Humber College real estate program, look to my exam master mini courses in the description below, all the way from course one to Sims two. It will be updated. It is waiting to be fully updated as soon as this new information is dripped out. I will continually be keeping them up to date and accurate, and all of those links are also value links for the time being for the YouTube family. Again, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below or just DM, email me. I get back to everyone. My name is Callum Moore, eXp Realty real estate broker here in Ontario, and we'll see you in the next one.